Hello, I'm Elizabeth Warburton and welcome to Season 3 of Property Elevator. In Season 2, we saw many property professionals face the angels to try and secure that all-important funding for their property projects. And this year, we're back for more. Now, we've seen over the last year just how important it is to have your money working for you. With inflation rising and bank interest levels at their lowest in years, it's never been more important to put your money to good use. This is why so many people turn to property investing. It's not easy though, you often need both the finance and the knowledge to take that deal over the line. And that's where our angels fly down to help you. In this show, we give property professionals the chance to pitch their deals to our five seasoned property investors. Helen Chorley, John Howard, Paul Mahoney, Ranjan Bhattacharya, and Nicholas Woolwork, or who we call our property investment angels. These developers have the chance to walk away with the backing of someone who can bring both the finance and experience to their deal. You're watching Property Elevator. Hi, I'm John Howard. I've been a property developer and investor for 40 years and during that time I've bought and sold in the region of 4,000 properties. My name is Paul Mahoney. I'm a property investor. I also founded Nova Financial Group, which is a property investment advisory company. My name's Helen Chorley. I'm a professional property investor. I'm also a co-founder of the Property Sisters UK community, supporting women and SME developers in the industry. My name is Nicholas Woolwork. I'm an investor, developer, and owner of PropertyForum.com and the development brand Redbrick. My name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I'm a property entrepreneur, an investor and developer for the last 30 years. Who would like to start first, offer-wise? Got people throwing money at you, that's always a great sign. The problem you've got here, in my view, is you've got basement. Basement always rings alarm bells to me. I think you've missed some opportunities here, which is what I'd bring to the party. And what are the issues you mentioned that you said you've got solutions for? But if that's the right price, why hasn't it been snapped up? I think the windows is quite a serious concern. I know the road and I know the way exactly where it is. There is meat on the bone. So make an offer then. Oh, well. Welcome to episode one. Let's see who our first pitch of the day is. Tristan, welcome to the show. What um, have you brought today then? So today I'm coming along with a property that I've named Yeah Vista, um, which looks Love over the that. river in Norwich. Um, it's a beautiful property which has previously been a warehouse until about 2000. Right. And then it's been converted into offices and used as a building um, consultancy firm. So you're, you're wanting commercial to resi? Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. Um, and touch where there's enough margin in there to be able to retain the units at the end or with a few different exits. So tell me, what do you need from the Angels today? Um, so today I'm looking to raise £240,000 of seed capital mm -hmm. to go towards the deal. Um, I've already raised uh, or found Dev Finance for the property. Okay. So it's just the seed equity to get the deal going and moving forwards. Yep. And then hopefully we'll be able to turn the whole project round in about eight months. Brilliant. Well, good luck. I'll have a chat to you when you get out. Uh, I've got my fingers crossed for you. Fingers crossed. Thanks. We've now got Tristan coming in to see us and um, he's got a deal in Norwich, which uh, funnily enough, I obviously know very well, got businesses in Norwich, so uh, and I know exactly where this is, so that should be interesting. Mm, looks like a good yeah. one. Thank you for coming in today. Um, I'd like to know, we'd, or we'd all like to know actually, a bit about you and a bit about the deal you've brought us today. And yeah. where you bought that shirt. <laughs> and where <laughs> I bought the shirt. This came direct from China. Wow. And, uh, oh, excellent. <laughs> and I've ended up having a, a few people could ask, do I just have the one shirt? No, there's, there's a selection of four of them. So then that way, uh, excellent. you can Very always on brand. keep them on brand. Um, and there's also in the car park, you'll find there's a zebra print van as well. Wow. So, Excellent. Uh, it runs all the way through. Good brand. He's going to say a zebra. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to get on with the pitch? Uh, shall do. So yeah. um, thank you very much for having me today. I've come along to bring a property that I've named Yeah Vista. 
um, which is 34 Yarmouth Road, which just faces out the river and is located in the Broads Authority. I have been a property investor, whether for myself or for other people, um, since about 2012. Previously, I used to work for a student property investor and landlord who had about 150 houses when I joined them and about 200 when I left. And whilst I was working for them, I was their property investment manager. Um, and without even realising it, I was deal sourcing, finding properties and opportunities for them, gutting them, refurbing them. Um, and you'll see in my CVs that I've given you, um, at one point I was doing six refurbs, did about 45 rooms and um, with four build teams in two and a half months. So I then moved over to a company called Castle Now, which you'll see in there. Um, and there I was working for a ground rent investor and freehold investor. And I was just trying to find stuff where we could add a bit more margin to it. And typically we focused on problem properties where we find a problem, fix it, and then we can then take the margin. So, I mean, you know, if you'd be able to find a property where it's got management issues, we'd then be able to uplift the YP that we're selling at. And when I moved down to Southampton, I thought, why work for someone else? I can see how creative this can be, how more interesting this can be, and what we can do with finance and funding. Let's go do it for myself. So that's a little bit about me. Well, that's more than a little bit about me. That's quite a lot about me. Let's talk about the deal, please. <laughs> that's yeah. fine. Um, we've got a purchase price agreed at £335,000. And as you'll see in the packs, we've got a GDV of about 1.38 million once we've achieved planning on, on top of the Class O. It's a commercial to residential investment. Um, and you can see it's not necessarily the most beautiful building from this angle, but to the left of it, we've got a pub. But then all around the area, it's in a really quite a nice residential area where the pound per square, uh, pound per square foot is fairly high for the area. In Norwich, it averages between 270 to 300. I believe off the top of my head, this is about 310, 320 pounds square foot in this area. Initially, I went in offering an exchange with delayed completion to get it in at 5%. And the idea being it would be subject to planning. Um, the vendor is actually quite an old person and they've decided that they don't want to deal, deal with that. And they've had a negative experience before on it. So that's why I've used a lockout agreement. So the idea is I want to go for as many units as we can possibly fit in the building. So then I can then go back to the Broads Authority with planning to then come back down to the project I want and deliver something that actually suits the area and the needs of the people in the area. I've had a main contractor to come around and have a look at the building to give a rough idea of what they think and needs doing with it. I've had a structural engineer around to the property as well. Today, I'm looking for seed capital of about £240,000. I've been in touch with my broker and secured development finance and funding for the building with Octane Capital. Um, so the idea is that once we come down the line, they will then fund it, the development, development further on. The other side of it is we've got open market value bridging against what we believe the property to be worth once we've got the class O on it. The idea then being over the space of the development will then draw down as we get hit through certain stages. But I've done subdivides. Um, we've turned one beds into two beds. But something of this scale, I haven't done myself. So that's why I've then gone to a project management company locally to look to bring on their services, which then they can bring on contractors, bring those on board, and then they can then deliver the site from start to finish, ensuring we've got the guarantees on it. The, one of the interesting things I think is interesting, I quite like numbers. As you will see, you've got endless numbers in your packs. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> we'll be good friends Lovely. with Helen. Yes, <laughs> delighted with that. It should achieve about a 26% um, margin on the deal. Um, there's I, off the top of my head, I think it's about 37% return on cost. So it looks like you're going to use PD to get the the conversion to studio two one beds and two three beds, and then go back for planning to try to get two five beds duplex uh, five bed duplex out of it. And that's going to be like HMO type thing, is it? Yeah, that's the idea. So um, where it's quite close to the city centre and is. You know, and that is that not that close to the tr city centre, is it's it, not that Tristan? close, no. Because I know it. I know the road and I know the way, exactly where it is. So what I've done is in the back of the pack, you'll see that I've got a letter from a local HMO landlord, or letting agent, and they've turned around and confirmed the rents that they believe that we could achieve for that property. With option one, it's not really worth doing it, is it? No. But, but, you, but you've you got it subject to planning to get option two. Yeah, that's the idea, to then right. lift it up. And how long is your lockout agreement? So this is the lockout agreement covers the initial permitted development. And so then that brings it up. So it's three months three from months when we had it in. Okay. And that was about two, three weeks ago. So okay. just before we go any further, I just want to say excellent pitch. Slightly long, but that's fine. But, <laughs> but the detail you've gone to, um, for someone that hasn't done a deal of this size, you're doing all the right things. Engaging the project management firm, getting builders quotes, getting structural engineering, getting the key um, consultants on board early before you buy it to, to you know find any red flags. You know, well done on that. I think you've... Thank you. You've done really well so far, thank you. Um, just, just talk me through 
the upstairs is actually a studio flat. Okay. The owner who's got owns the building wants to retain that to themselves. So that's been carved off. So the building that we're getting is effectively you can see the pitch roof the one behind the it. Yeah. Goes across and that comes down the back and that hole has been built pretty dense, so it runs straight back to the river. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're getting out of it. So it isn't what we're seeing. So what we're no, not quite. So this section. So did you used to work for an estate agent, by any chance? <laughs> so <laughs> so okay. it's on so the left. The, so that's why in your in your It's the path. building on the left. Yeah. Yes. Not the building on the right. No. Okay. What about flooding? That's the first thing I looked at, and that's Good. probably why it's put most people off the property, because yep. as you all know, with um, permitted development, flooding instantly puts it out of the question. Where this property in the front of it is elevated, there's a 0.1% flood risk chance, and then there's... So the is most it one, two or three, zone one, two or three, planning wise, uh, flood wise? I don't know the answer to that question, but it's the minimal, it's the least... It's one then. So it's going to be one. one. Which is one in 100 years, I think, something like yeah. that. Now um, that surprises me. Is it because it's on a big slope down to the yeah. broads? It does look quite high up, doesn't it? Because so the it broads does There's flood. also, mm. when I've looked at the, you can use the flood risk planes and everything else online. That's it, yep. And when you look at that, even on the other properties and other places in the area, mm. they're actually, even though the ones that are lower down to the river, are still on a similar kind of flood risk level. Well, how much parking is on site? doesn't look very many. So... At the moment, out the front, is enough width to be able to fit four cars. Mm -hmm. There's also um, across you say, the road... Why do you say it's fine or with prior approval? Pardon? Prior approval looks at highways and therefore parking. Okay. So some authorities will want to see the national minimum standards for parking that they apply on normal planning applications as part of a prior notification. So you need to definitely have a parking highways consultant on board Okay. to see yeah. what the attitude, the local person that knows the local council and knows their attitude to parking. The fortunate bit is across um, opposite the site, you'll see there's yeah. a close that comes yeah. up and there's car parking on the side okay. uh, or there's spaces available. Yeah. And then again, around the area, there's other flats and other developments nearby. And again, there's more mm. roads that cut off from it. But, you know, they're going to look at highways carefully on this, I think. And y you need to ask your planning consultant if, or get a planning consultant that, that really knows that council because it's just the attitude of the council. I've got properties in say Newbury and Reading, Newbury want the full national space standards for, for parking, not space, national standards. Reading don't want any parking. So complete opposite wow. opinions in two towns that are less than 15 minutes apart. What I'm concerned about and what I think you should have allowed for is a little bit more time in that lockout period. Because I know it, if it prior approval is 56 days and that's in slam dunk kind of mm. cases whenever there is something else like all the criteria that we've discussed like highways and flood and there may be noise i don't know what the, you mentioned there's a pub next door there'll be noise impact of the noise from that commercial noise occupier and these guys yeah. what these needs is th these aren't showstoppers they're things that you need specialist consultants to do reports on yeah. and studies on and submit that with your application and that adds to the time and then in the case of parking, for example, you know, they may want something like a Section 106 agreement to say that it's going to be a car-free development. That yep. takes a little bit of time. So what typically happens is one week before the end of the 56-day deadline, the council or the planning officer will say, can we have a th five-week extension to allow for this, that and the other? The other thing that worries me is the GDVs. Because with commercial to residential conversion, it's this old phrase which I love, if it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it is the duck. So when you've got commercial buildings that look as though they're residential buildings, you will find that the GDVs will be pretty much bang on what G uh, the GDVs are for comparable residential properties. But if it looks obviously commercial, warehousey, there's going to either going to be a massive discount with the, v in, with the end values compared to similar purpose-built stuff, or you have to spend a lot of money on recladding and um, yeah. looking so the with the and GDVs, have you taken that into account? Sorry, sorry, carry on. With the GDVs, they're, they've been based around about the two hundred and ninety pound a square foot mark, so that is a bit below what's out in the rest of the market. The other thing that benefits this property is obviously, I realise a few of the units can have side views yeah. rather than the necessary over the river. But the units at the back that are facing over the river, they'll be very nice. They will, and very they nice. achieve a much more of a premium down that area than any of the properties. Especially, that especially, especially, especially which, if you can get some moorings. Which of the units have the view at so the back? So the split level duplexes will have views out the back onto the river, and then the idea with the penthouse that's going to end up having a view looking out the back and across the side of it. So. So the HMO units have the. But they could also be used if you didn't put the stud work in on the ground on the first okay. floor. 
but you could also use them as, say, family houses and have large rooms across the back of them if you wanted to. Who would want a three-bedroom penthouse, even if the view is amazing, above two five-bedroom HMOs? The idea with it was that the three-bedroom penthouse would be used as an HMO as well. As well, OK. Um, one thing that you haven't mentioned is windows. I mean, I can see one of the side elevation has uh, a few windows, but the other doesn't have any. Yeah. We're going to be fitting all of the units across the sides where we've already got um, windows and outlook. And then the idea is then once we go into planning permission. But in terms of planning, you'll need planning for those windows. Yeah. OK, so, so you could potentially get your prior notification. The lockout agreement runs out. You buy it. You then got to go through possibly a three to six month planning process to get the windows before you can implement that PD. Have you considered that problem? Um, so the flip side is, if there, as you've said, if there is a delay like that, um, then where I said probably with the planet, with the class O on it and something else moving along with it, we should be able to hit about £410,000 on the sale price. So even if you wanted to exit the site early and not do the rest of the development, there's still a half decent margin there, which doesn't quite answer your question. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying, but that's like a get out of jail free card, yeah. maybe just sell it on for whatever you can. Maybe there's a bit of uplift. But maybe someone experienced like ourselves might come in and say, well, why are you selling it now? It's got no windows. The, the one thing they'll look at is the likelihood of getting those windows. Yeah. And they're going on the planning portal and see your refused application for windows. Yeah. Unless you've withdrawn it, of course, yeah. which is what an experienced investor would do. They'd, they'd withdraw it before it got refused. But they'll still see a withdrawal, which most people assume would have been a refusal. Yeah. Yeah. And so then it probably isn't worth okay. what you think it is. It'll go back to, to okay. office value. I think the windows is quite a serious concern. This to me looks a dog's dinner, looks a mess. For me, it's a knockdown, and I don't often say that. Absolutely. It's a, it's a yeah. knockdown and it's a new build overlooking the, overlooking the water. Another that couple of stories. You can design all the flats and all the flats overlooking the water. I'm not interested in Definitely. HMOs overlooking. Why would you put an HMO overlooking the, overlooking the water? It's premium. I think it's not a bad location. It's not brilliant, but it's not bad. Um, Norwich City Council concerned me. I've got an application on, I've got 12 flats, and you'll know, in Earlham Road. Uh, you know Earlham Road, good road. I'm trying to get two extra floors on it, and they've been five months nearly, and they still haven't got a decision. They can't get hold of anyone. They're, they're a bit of a nightmare. So I, I, I'm concerned about that. I would personally go on a, go on a, a pre-app for a new build scheme. If you get a positive response, then I would certainly be interested in, in working with you. And I'm local, so. I'm with John on that. The word I wrote down is this is, this is more complicated than I have the, the, the headspace to deal with, to be honest. Um, but you have been incredibly thorough. Yeah. And you've answered every question that's been thrown at you so far. But like I say, this, that's got headache written all over it to me and I'm, I'm not on for any more headaches than I can cause myself. Thank you. I think there's simpler, <laughs> simpler deals to do. Yeah in Norwich, I can find those deals for you. Yeah, just, just to echo what some of the guys said, it looked, the, the, the models you put together, all, everything you're doing is right, mm. just doesn't seem like the site is right. If you're applying that to a site that's a bit easier and, and you're not having to change so much yep. and you know, force the most out of it to make it work, yeah. because even if everything goes to plan with this, it's not a super profitable deal. Yeah, exactly. Um, mm. You know, you're looking at 25, 26%, not bad, but that's if everything really goes to plan, mm -hmm. yeah. which probably won't. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's probably much better deals out there which have more profit in them and are easier. I could make that work, that deal work for you, probably, but it's a lot of hassle. And if it was a competition and yeah. said that was what I was given to help <laughs> make you make it work, then yeah. we could make it work, I'm sure. But doesn't mean just because you can do it, yeah. doesn't mean you should. Okay. And I just think there's, with your ability, and you're, and obviously, you, you know, you, 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 you know what you're doing, you're, you're, you're active and, and all the rest of it. I think you can find, if I challenge you or one of us angels challenges you, I think you can find a better deal than that, a simpler deal, a less risky deal. So, uh, yeah, I, would you look, I'm, I'm on the same page as the guys. I think it's the kind of deal that you can just about make work. I think the biggest issue is, is the planning for the windows. Yeah. John says the council's slow, you know, unless you can negotiate some overage with the vendor, which is where you give them the percentage of the profit of the uplift of the development to tie them into a subject to yeah. planning offer, uh, you know, full subject to planning. And then perhaps put in two schemes, put in the 
the PD scheme, which is going to look like a bit of a hash to the council, yeah. or you put in this beautiful luxury four-story yeah. scheme, yeah. and then they're, you, they're going to want to go for that one because they know you, they'll get this hashed yeah. up PD scheme. Well, I, I, I normally like these sort of deals, but I think the issue here is um, just on the PD alone, um, the, in, to implement the PD alone is not worthwhile from the figures yeah. that you've got here. And, and uh, you've, it's, it's hingent on getting the planning. So I think the offer should have been made, rather than conditional on getting the prior approval three months, yeah. it should have been made conditional on the end result. Because the problem we'll have here is that you have to complete in three months, and we've probably got to wait at least a year before we can do anything meaningful on site. Yeah. For th and for the amount of money tied up yeah. in that project, the duration of the project before you can put spade in the ground, and that's why it doesn't and quite and work. And just bear in mind, he's the king of PD. Yeah. The prince of PD is over there. <laughs> but he's the I king. I thought he was going to call me the queen of PD, <laughs> and I would be very concerned. <laughs> is there a joker? So, is there a joker? So, so, yeah, that's probably me. Um, Helen? Uh, no. <laughs> Head headache. Nicholas, the same? It's not for me, guys, okay. but you're highly investable and yeah, a great I, pitch today. Thanks. Uh, Tristan, what I would like to do, if I may, is, is have a coffee with you next week okay. in Norwich. Sounds like a plan. How's that? Yeah, fantastic. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Well done. Well thank done. you. <laughs> really well done. So, Tristan, tell us what happened when you walked in the room. So they asked for a little bit more detail and information about me, and I can go on for absolutely ever. <laughs> um, so I think the pitch may have been a little bit longer than they were expecting. So what was the feedback in general? So um, they kind of looked at the site. I think some of them found it quite interesting, the aspects that it's got, though there's a few challenges with it. Okay. And I think John's comment was, knock the thing down and build something new. Right. So uh, the, what I've gone in with, they don't, weren't particularly happy with, um, and thought it was a bit more of a challenge to fit the property together mm -hmm. for the margin that would be achieved. So do you think you'll consider demolishing it and, and putting another one? Or It'll be worthwhile running stick. the numbers and having yeah. a look, because there yeah. are some really desirable flats and blocks around the area. Okay. So it could be worthwhile having a look to see what the GDV is and mm. whether it's worth going for. for okay. Planning. Well, good luck. Keep Thank in you. touch and let us know how you get on. We'd love to, to see how it progresses over the next few months. Much appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Again, for me, frustrating because he's, he's, he's investable in and it's local to me and he just yeah, didn't come with a good close. enough deal. And he answered kind of ev every question that got thrown at him. And from a development oh. side, he was going down the exact correct route with the development, you know. Yeah. He would be able to run that on his own with minimal guidance. I think with, uh, with PD, there's so many opportunities out there, but it's important to get your shot selection right. Exactly. You don't have Range to go in. for everything. Some you can hit sixes and bat them out of the park, and those are the ones to go for. Exactly. Ones to avoid. Just because it's possible doesn't exactly. mean you should, you should do it. And we've yes. always said that, Ranger, yes. haven't we? And good summary. And I think that's a really good summary. Sven, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm so excited to be here. Oh. I can't sleep last night. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Oh, well, welcome. It's our absolute pleasure to have you with us. Um, where did you come from today? Uh, I am from Wimbledon, but originally I'm from China. So tell us a little bit about the deal that you've brought today for our angels. Uh, so it's a commercial to residential conversion uh, using the latest class MA permitted given right. So the timeline right. should be quite short, 12 to 18 months. Very There's nice. a nice 1.1 million profit. Lovely, uh, that's yeah. what we like to hear. And the uh, return on GDV is 44%. Uh, I have actually prepared a very, very um, large pack with all the numbers because I know Helen likes it. She does. Yeah, well she asks me remembered. questions about the numbers. <laughs> she will grill you. Yeah, yeah, but in a good way. They're yeah. all lovely. I'm sure you'll have a great time in the room. Is there anyone in particular that you'd like backing from or would you just be happy to work with any of the investors? Uh, work with any. Actually, I've done a course with Ranjan before. Okay. Uh, I'm in the uh, same property network group, group. with Helen. And actually, I, I've seen, I've read John's book. Yes, so I've, I'm, me too. I kind of know, they don't know me, but I know them all very well. And I would be happy for any of them. And if I'm a bit greedy, maybe after today, uh, if they can all become uh, like mentors on my property journey, and uh, maybe one day, hopefully, I'm lucky, become my friends. Good. And I think that's worth yeah. more than the money I'm getting today. Absolutely. Mm. Long-term plan. I like it. Yeah. Well, good luck. <laughs> Thank and I you. will um, have a chat to you when you get out. Mm. Fingers across for you. Wish me luck. <laughs> so much luck your way. <laughs> Thank you. Next, we've got Schwen coming in and uh, a development 
in Surbiton, very nice area. And I think, unfortunately, she already knows one of the angels. Ooh. I think we can probably guess which one. He's got a, <laughs> a very big smile on his face. Shall we, shall we get her in? It's a very thorough pack. I think she's been well trained. <laughs> yeah, very mm. good. Or, or ruined. <laughs> Shren, thank you very much for coming in today. Uh, would you like to tell us a bit about yourself and a bit about the deal, please? I, my name is Xuan and I have been doing property full time for three years now. My background was investment fund and I did some management consulting as well. So um, I naturally I have a good eye for numbers and investments. But about four years ago, um, I had a baby girl and her arrival basically completely changed my life. And she's so cute and adorable and I just want to spend time with her. And all of a sudden, sitting in the office for 12 hours just stopped appealing to me. And it was then actually towards the final months of my maternity leave, I took the plunge into full-time development. Uh, it was very, very scary at that time. Imagine a little child and uh, you know everything. It was very challenging, but uh, looking back, I think it was the best decision ever I made for myself, for my little girl and my, my family, my entire family. I've managed to build a rental portfolio of 12 properties in southwest London. And the most of them are actually multi-units or large HMOs, eight, nine, ten bedroom. And the rental income from that portfolio has allowed both my husband and I to quit our busy, stressful London jobs. So my husband now is a full-time Kung Fu instructor. <laughs> wow. That's his passion. And be nice wow, to me. If cool. you're not nice, you need to hire a bodyguard, seriously. <laughs> so John, needs a, John needs a bodyguard because an awful why, lot of people don't like him. Why does she look at me like when she's when you said that? <laughs> <laughs> Including <laughs> watch the show. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> As if. Okay, you need to hire bodyguards too. Uh, you'll leave Helen alone. Um, but you know, it's his passion. He really loved it. So he's actually very grateful towards me. Um, because I've done this, and uh, but the best thing is we both spend so much time with our little girl, and she's very, very lucky because when I was little, I, I didn't have that, and I think it was my best gift to her. Oh, fantastic. Um, um, tell us about the deal, please. So it's a commercial to residential conversion, uh, and uh, what we are buying are three, uh, I can't leave this circle, but three shops in the front, Yep. And underneath the shops, there are three basements about the same size as the shops, but they are not full basements, they are semi-basement. And besides that, you also have a massive warehouse in the back, it's behind this building. Uh, All together, we have about 525 square meter. And uh, what I'm planning to do is use the latest uh, uh, class MA PD right <laughs> to turn this. Yeah, Ranjan. Yeah, Ranjan. This deal's got Ranjan all, all over it, hasn't it? Yeah, this is his I DNA. I read your book as well. Ranjan I read your book. Have you? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank book, you very book. much. Yeah. Well, that's nine ninety five. <laughs> I've had off you, so thank you very much. But you are too busy. You are this big, short developer. You don't have time to educating other people. Uh, I, that's not quite true, but anyway, carry on. Big um, shop, John. So, mm. class MA. So, I get three smaller shops in the front, and uh, then I get three large duplex garden flat in the back behind the shop. So that would take a third of the shop and the whole of the entirety of the basement. And then the re warehouse can be converted into four flats. I think each about 44 square meter. The GDV uh, is 2.5 million. Total cost is 1.4, including 800 purchase price, 50K planning, legal, other transactional cost, and uh, 560, uh, build cost, which include a 20% contingency because the prices are going up through the roof. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that will give us about 1.1 million um, profit. Yep. So PD can help us significantly de-risk. There is still some risk, but we can de-risk. So first of all is we de-risk the planning. Secondly is the timeline and sometimes planning. And this is London Borough of Kingston. I'm not sure if I can say it on TV, but a bit difficult. Oh, they uh, all are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we slate the local authority all the time. They have a problem okay. with the planning. Um, not always country. their fault, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No. Um, but you know, sometimes Assistant. planning takes a long time. And, uh, uh, and Helen likes numbers, right? You no, know, 1.1 million over 12 months, 1.1 million over 36 months, just completely different story. Exactly. Uh, the last one I'm so excited is actually if you calculate the price per square foot, it's only 140. 
uh, we are buying this commercial. But this is in Surbiton, a very, very high value London suburb. The residential price is between 500 and 600. So we are basically taking, unfortunately, a defunct place on our high street and turn into something very valuable, the you know, housing stock we need in London. And uh, also with this class MA, what is so fabulous about it is um, this is conservation area. I'm actually, I'm very local, I live in Wimbledon. I know all my friends, developer friends, they go around this area, they don't even go there because it's conservation area, you have very few PD rights, the council is difficult, the conservation officer is difficult. But this class MA, you have a small print that says, you can do it in conservation area. First of all, I think Ranjan should be very proud of you because you've done a great, uh, a great pitch to us all. Um, so far, so so far, so good. Long way to go. Uh, so you mentioned that you've spoken, spoken with some planning consultants, which is great. Um, the, the build costs is that you said you spoke with the builder as well. That's a, just a rough rough estimate, is it? Or, or pretty it's actually quite think? detailed. So I got a two basement specialists and the one builder, general builder, which is the one I've been using for three years now. And the, um, so based on my discussion with my friends and stuff, and they told, I think the best way to do it is uh, a specialist contract for basement to do the structural work, to raise the roof, to do the tanking. And afterwards, I get my old builder in to do the rest of the work. And what are the issues you mentioned that you said you've got solutions for? So we need to do a full planning because it's conservation area to puncture the windows in. Um, but the windows will be in the back. You can't see them on the ground floor, looking into your own yard. So no overlooking, no privacy issue. So planning consultants say just the paperwork. There's no way the council say you can't have light in your basement. The last one and the, the trickiest one is impact on the conservation area. And, and that's why my planning consultant said, do not change the shop front at all and leave 30 square meter in the front. So 30 square meter is a viable shop. And in the numbers, in your refurbishment numbers, you say you've got 20% contingency. Mm. Could you, t so, so w what exactly is that amount? So that's about 100K or 120K? Um, I actually have tried, if you look at them, I have a full list of the different build cost. I've even included like structural warranty, utilities, uh, SAP calculation, everything I can think of, I've included there. But I still put another 20% on top, just because uh, in case yeah. there is something I miss. How, how much a square foot or how much a square meter uh, does that work About 1,100 per square meter. What's I have the end three game? pages of numbers for you, Jeez. Helen. I know I you like it. Oh, well <laughs> done. Yeah. Get a gold star What's for the your numbers. What's the end game with this? Is it to sell on? Sell I, on the units? Yes. Uh, I'm actually a property hoarder. I rarely sell. But with this one, I want to sell because we can use help to buy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you get a premium out yes. of it. Yes. Yeah. I have an issue with warehouses because it's all very well that they, they're PD, but you know, is the slab that it's built on safe enough is it insulated no so you have to insulate the floor you probably have to change the roof you're virtually There'd be starting again. very little left of the the building uh, and it's actually probably more expensive to convert a warehouse than it is just to build is it single, single story building work and that kind of thing yeah. i mean yeah. yeah what's it made out of what's the structure of it out of interest currently the, the warehouse is it like a steel, was steel frame? <laughs> You're a property developer now. Uh, yeah. Struggling is with it, constructions. But still. is it, very bri briefly, is it a steel building? I think it's a, building? a brick. So brick. it's a brick built building, yeah. so that but bodes I, well, But it used possibly. to be warehouse, so I think the foundation is quite strong because they over-engineer the warehouse. They have to hold uh, yeah. a lot of things. Shwing, the, prob the problem you've got here, in my mm. view, is you've got basement. Basement mm. always rings alarm bells to yeah. me. Mm. Cost. Because the cost of doing it, you've got uh, £1,100 um, pounds per square metre, mm. which you've got about £120 a square foot, which to me, in London... In a conservation in area. In a conservation area. With basements, I with think a warehouse. Light. You really... Now, if you'd, if you'd read all three of my books, rather than just the one, mm -hmm. you would know that a schedule of works is absolutely vital. Mm. And a schedule of works... If you did a schedule of works on this, which you need to do at some point... Then, then you would really flush out the price better. You get to the actual price it's going to cost mm -hmm. rather than a building estimates because builders want to get the work. They give you an estimate. You then do a schedule of works and guess what? Woof, the Mr. price goes stuff. up. Especially at the moment, I appreciate you've got 20% in for contingency, which is very good. I wouldn't normally have that much in, but in the current circumstances, you may well be right. And I, I applaud you for that. I think you're 
trying to make a, um, a purse out of a sow's ear, is that the right saying? <laughs> That's the right saying, isn't Something it? Something like that. Silk purse. Silk purse out of a sow's ear. In other words, you know, you've got a, you've got a project here, you've done all the training, you've done all the education, you're very, very bright, and you're squeezing, trying to squeeze every little last ounce to make this deal attractive and work. Mm. And in my experience, they need to work more naturally. They mm. need to be easier. If mm. you've got to work, so, it's like a relationship. Mm. If you've got to work so hard on that relationship to keep it going, mm. probably not worth it in the first place. Mm. It's got to be natural. For me, this deal isn't, it, it's not for me, mainly not because of, not because, uh, of yourself, because you're very, very investable, very investable for a number of reasons. Well trained by Ranjan for a start. But just because the deal you brought me today, there's too many ifs and buts for me. So on, th on this occasion, unfortunately, because I'd love to work with you, um, it, 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 it's not one I can do. The second risk besides planning I have is basement and I'm quite scared of basement because I've never done one before and uh, I will actually take your advice. Maybe I'll bulk another 30% of build cost on top of that. Just do a schedule yeah. of works and go yeah. out and get some proper prices. Yeah, mm. absolutely. That's all you need yeah. to do. We I, need a QS. I hope I'm wrong. Mm. I, th I think you just need a QS to do a, a full mm. scope of work yeah, to price yeah, it for yeah. you. All that, that would be yeah. You know, a couple of grand spent on that is going to be, you'll, you'll get that number down to the nearest sort of 20 grand. Still thinking. It's interesting. Tactically. Tactically See, I've thinking. just come out and said what I think, you know, which I yeah. think is the best thing to do. The others all got tactics. They're dodging and they're, they're ducking <laughs> and they're diving. I'm I just, come out, I I just come out and say how it is. But John, look, uh, even if you add another 20% build cost, uh, we got a 1.1 million profit here within 12 to 18 months. Can I not uh, persuade you? Bring me a better, small sense, more, more safer deal, if you like, and I'd love to do something with you. Okay, yes, Paul. sir. Yeah, look, th there obviously are unknowns, but those unknowns can become knowns afterwards. That sounds like <laughs> Donald <today>. spelled. <laughs> so um, I think, you know, if you get that schedule of works, and even if that increases the, the build costs a little bit, you're right, you know, there is, there is meat on the bone. Um, so I'd be willing to offer you what you're asking. Yes! <laughs> 280 grand, 50% of the <laughs> profit. Interesting. You might get a better off on that, yeah? I think there's something really important to mention that we haven't asked you, which is in the pack, and let's let the viewers at home understand this. You're offering the 280,000 you need for the deposit money, and you've offered 50% yeah. to the investor. We've also offered a 10% return on that money whilst we lend it into the project. Yeah. I think that's incredibly generous. The reason I come here is not for this deal. I want to know you guys, and hopefully, over my 30 year career, you can become my mentors and friends. That's why I actually got a deal already, got an offer on this. Uh, someone you might know, Helen, because he's in our group and he worked with you before, I think. He's offered 80% um, uh, bridging on purchase and 100% of the uh, development value. But I ditched him and come here. <laughs> <laughs> quite right. Well, quite might have made the right choice. That's a good decision. <laughs> got people throwing money at you. That's always a great sign, Shuam. Um, for me, I had the same concerns on this deal as John does, particularly oh. on the basement and particularly kind of on the costs. I know you have got a decent contingency in there, but again, you know, with anything in these things, it, the, the, the risk on the cost is one way mm. and the risk on the time is one way as well. It's, mm. you know, I'd like to have confidence it would come in in 18 months. I, I don't know if I do. Mm. have confidence but but this is a great pack it's very well prepared i do think you need kind of a little bit more detail on the um on the that um schedule of works mm. and um yeah no i'd love to stay in contact with you this deal isn't for me but mm. hopefully we can work together in the future yes madam <laughs> I'm, I'm John, john's right with the the issues but you've solved those you've got a solution for them mm. um and therefore you've de-risked most of it i don't think any of us are going to be expecting to offer and, and, and for one of those to be a problem, because the deal probably won't go through for you anyway. So I don't see those as issues that won't be resolved before the deal's done. Uh, and I think there's even more planning uplift at the back. I want to step away from this, because I think there might be two other offers coming. 
And That's a bit negative. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to go up against Paul on this one. I think he's made a great offer. That's interesting. I'd probably want to. I'd probably want to offer you slightly keener terms. So I won't be offering today. But great. You know, I think it's a great site. It's right up my alley. It's exactly what I do as well. Um, mm. And I wish you well with it. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll get through those minor issues. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just you left round, Jan. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I love it. It's. Um, uh, this is exactly what I've kind of encouraged you guys to look for. I don't share their pessimisms. I'll say something about your pack and the way you've looked at anything. I don't think you've left anything out. Um, no, very thorough. I think that um, I do agree with you know, some of the build cost issues. Um, but I think the, the issues here is it's not that you've missed anything out in the way you've um, assessed this and presented it. I think you've missed some opportunities here, which is what I'd bring to the party. Because um, this, has, this sort of deal needs a lot of expert knowledge because there are a lot of moving parts and there are a lot of different PD rules and all of that. And there's a lot of sequencing issues to sequence things in the right way to, you know, because you're relying mm. on the, the implementation of a planning permission before you can get the, do the PD and all this sort of stuff. And I know this stuff, as you know. So I would, um, I'm going to give you actually more than what you have asked for. <sighs> In this, wow. in this JV. I, I am happy to do this JV with you on your JV terms. Um, I think actually um, we can do better on the GDV uh, and we'll work together on that. But what I'll, all, I know you've done um, some of my commercial property training, but I will also put you on my one year mastermind. Oh. Come on. That is Come a, on. That is a that group. The rules of the game. No, no, I'm, I'm offering, oh, I'm offering bye something. Bye, John. Beautiful. See you. You see will you. be bye bye with John. 30 <laughs> people bye bye John. who <laughs> live and breathe bye bye these sort of projects. Thank you very And we much. do this all the time, basically. Mm. And I'll plug you into that group for a year. We'll have a lot of fun. We'll do this. And we'll, you know, because this is, this, this deal represents an opportunity which is going to be so prevalent now with so many of these buildings becoming defunct and needing repurposing. And this is a textbook deal. Mm. Um, textbook so let's deal. do it together and uh, make it happen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, Paul, as well. But so you know. you've got to make it... <laughs> thank you, Paul, but bye-bye. You've got to make it... I can feel the next You've now got to make a decision of who you want to work with. Yeah, you do have to decide. And all that glitters is not gold, remember? Now, run, <laughs> now run John. <laughs> That's very true. Why are you trying to... In my suit. <laughs> <laughs> Ranjan, you we, turned we, me down first. I'm just okay. putting. Ranjan, I'm just we had putting a conversation earlier. We had a conversation earlier. Yeah. You agreed with me that sharing is caring. Yeah, and you should have. <laughs> and you said you said the other with deal you, you should have shared together the one I got. So uh, maybe on the next one. Oh God. I'll find you another one. Don't okay. worry. Okay. <laughs> should find you another one. <laughs> okay. I'll have one too. Okay. <laughs> can I, can yes. I get in on one? <laughs> John, do you want another one? I'd love to work with you with the right deal. I don't think this is the right mm. deal. Having said that, I do appreciate Ranjan's experience and knowledge on PD is far greater than mine, far greater than any uh, develop any uh, planning consultant as well. You don't need to waste your time going for seven days on a on down to Cornwall for that job. I tell you now. But I was just, a lot of drinking and just, partying. Just involved. just talk to Ranjan. Oh, it was so a party in Cornwall, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, right, talk, okay. just talk to Ranjan. Uh, anyway, which de what decision would you like to make? I think I'll go with the Ranjan and the Mastermind course. I was <laughs> going to pay for it myself, but he just offered. Oh, John. <laughs> <Shh. laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. No Thank you. Well Thank done. You. Well Thank done. you very much. Well done. So tell us how it went. <laughs> it can't be better. I'm so, so, so happy. Wow. I got multiple offers, and the most important, I got the offer I want. Excellent. Whose business card I got? So, Ranjan's business card. So you're working with Ranjan. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Congratulations. What was the deal then? What's he What's he offered you? What I'm asking for. Full Full amount. Yeah. Brilliant. And uh, what's even better? He's agreed to put me on his mastermind course for a whole year. That's so neat. I'll be Yeah, I'll be connected to this very small, tight knit uh, community, and I'll have like a face to face with Ranjan every week. So that's actually, I think, better even than the money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You, yeah. you did mention that, didn't you, about wanting to, <laughs> to work long term with them. And so that's brilliant news. So it couldn't yeah. have gone any better. I know. <laughs> well, the, um, the Brucey bonus. I uh, have to say, swung at your really, really, really uh, investable. Yeah, she was great. And she's, she's um, 
a sponge for the information and the oh learning, yeah, she's and she will implement it. I mean, you do so many courses, um, and th there are a lot of people that do Some courses don't. and don't implement. Yeah, she that's will the problem, take the yeah. learning and implement. And a lot of the stuff, the way she's presented the information, is just she's yeah. learnt it, and she's gone out, we've told her the, what to kind of look for, she's gone out and assessed it on those sort of metrics and yeah. things. She's, yeah. she's an implementer. Like I'm, I'm really looking forward to working with her on a better deal. Yeah, Let Ranjan, Ranjan do the and tricky one. You'll probably get an email this afternoon, John, with a much better deal in it. Well, you never know. <laughs> well, look out on YouTube. You'll see how this turns out. And I think it's slightly better than this. What are you going to do to it then? What's, you, there's one what's thing. The you plan? Can, listen, you can do a lot of things. You're a very clever guy. One thing you can't do is, is, is you can't influence bill costs, and the bill costs on that are going to be a lot, lot more than she is. Oh God, that warehouse, the warehouse alone I is half a million quid. Listen, the first thing is seriously, don't bother with the basements. Just, just convert without the, question because yeah. it, because this it's a red if you herring. look at this building, it looks like a residential. It yeah. was residential yeah, originally. It was originally yeah? Yeah. So we'll just make the entire lot residential yeah. and leave the basement. Yeah. Done. I agree. Good call. Uh, and that Good call. I agree. Cost and there's plenty in the warehouse. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Maybe try to punt on the on planning on the warehouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Try and get a two, three. That yeah. would be an in and type thing. And yeah. no, congratulations, Ranjan. Oh, it's painful We're to all say that, gutted. isn't it, John? <laughs> <laughs> He says with gritted teeth, well done, Andrew. And so we come to the end of the first episode of series three, and what an episode it was. Not everyone walked away with a deal. Everyone did walk away with some hugely valuable feedback, though, from our five angels. That's all for now. I'm Elizabeth Warburton, and you've been watching Property Elevator. Mm -hmm.